Well, first of all, everybody should get a divorce, <laughs> all right? And only idiots remain married forever, all right? Anybody have, an, if anybody have a little bit of intelligence, they would divorce, okay? All right, and the reason why people stay married is because of the social pressure. So even people will stay married sometimes, they're being beaten, they're being abused, physically, mentally, spiritually, and they will stay married just because the church, the society, their parents, their family, and to save face, okay? And the inculcation, the inculcation is that we should remain married forever. In fact, the promise that we make is that I will love you forever. Until death do we part. That's a promise we make. So that's a promise. And a lot of people don't like to break their promise. But I'm here. I'm saying break the promise. Right? The unreal love will last longer than the real love. Okay? And it is like this. The real love is like a real rose that dies relatively quickly. The unreal love is like a plastic rose that will last a very long time. And that's why I go into some people's house, you know, and they will never have real flowers. <laughs> they will always have plastic flowers. And their relationships are like that. It's a plastic relationship. But let us be clear, however, that real authentic love, okay, is unpredictable. You don't know exactly where it's going to go. Okay? Now, of course, what nurtures real love is more, is more like play. It is more like a joy. It's an it's a effervescence. It is a pleasure. If you ever notice lovers together, it's a play. They're kissing on the beat. They're playing. They're running. They're laughing. They're smiling. On the other hand, if you ever see a, a married couple together, it is work. Do you know? They're sometimes not even touching or holding hands or kissing in power. It is work. It's like they have to calculate that this is the person I'm married to. I have to make sure I do this. While on the other hand, two lovers is like no thought, no mind. It's like total presence and it's effortlessness. Okay. So in a married situation, you'll hear somebody say, my spouse is. It's a noun, my spouse is. It's almost like a relationship, like a mother-father relationship. My sister is, my spouse is. The, you know, it's a relationship. It's no longer a relating. It's no longer present in the moment. So it's a fundamental difference then between the heart, which is real love, all right? And the heart is unpredictable. You don't know how your heart is really going to feel tomorrow. Your heart could love one person today and it could very much well love somebody else tomorrow or next year, right? You really can't know. And that's why marriage was, all, that's also one of the reasons why marriage was invented. Marriage was invented because society and religion could not accept the unpredictability of people falling in love. I think many people who carry out the program and it's a program and they're just simply living out a program okay the program of marriage you know so it's kind of like this you come into the world you one of the earliest and most insidious program is marriage all right and it's programmed into you like something that you have to do so you simply go down the road and and i think a lot of people walking down that step or that aisle or whatever aisle or they call it or whatever they're walking down and they're saying to themselves, what the hell am I doing? And people should have as many relationships as they choose. In fact, we're on this planet to discover love. And one person can't really teach you love. Every love affair is a different one. We have been inculcated by religion and by church that we should have one partner for the rest of our lives. And that, and that we should um, have just this one person. And it's a fallacy. It is wrong. 